Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. Welcome. To thank Shoshu you. Studios. Thank you. This was long overdue. Yes. <laughs> like past to my birthday. Right. <laughs> Happy belated birthday. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you first of all I want to start by thanking you for being a very loyal Vivo woman. And um my first question that I threw to you is how long have you been a Vivo woman? I've forgotten actually. I would as I would uh, I don't even count. I just remember the first time I knew of Vivo mm -hmm. and the shows were open. Mm -hmm. I've been there ever since. I love it when you tag us on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. You always look absolutely amazing. Thank you. And you make it easy for us to look good, so I mean made in Kenya, thanks. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um tell us about Florence Machio. Who is she? Wow. I wear very many hats. I am a mother of two boys. Uh, I think many people know me because of the work that I do around gender-based violence. I started out as a journalist. Uh, then I progressed into the NGO world where I push more around policy, around uh, women's protection. I did a campaign called The Sound of Silence for children around Africa, just highlighting the issues of uh, children. When children are violated, they hardly you and I can go to a police station and report, can call a friend, but a child, where do they go if they are violated at home or in school? Where do they report? So I did that. I've written several books, uh, but the books around just helping countries and helping governments to think around protection. When you protect the most vulnerable, then you're able to protect the others. If we protect the ones, children, then it's easy to protect the rest of us. Yeah, so I like doing what I do and I've done that for quite a while. And it's something that makes me wake up in the morning and uh, do it and talk about it and push for policy at different levels uh, where you know I'm placed, whether it's in the NGO world or in government. And so that's what I love to do. I love singing. I sing in the choir. Yes, I sing in the choir and uh, I love cooking and baking and I love dancing. Amazing. When we were doing the photo shoot, I, I had to have music otherwise. Oh yes, the Boya Lukalu. Lukalu. Yes, right. that's my favorite. I'm just going to dive into your career. Yeah. Um, so from being a journalist who's interviewed Tony Blair yeah. and um, Bob Geldof. Geldof yes. yes. Uh, who's a global poverty eradication activist to a woman rights activist, okay, yes. activist yeah. and also like now GBV yes. activist. Yeah. You're such a force to reckon with. First of all, you're a powerhouse and I want to know what drives you to partake in such impactful work? I think for me, until every woman, every girl is safe, we are all not safe. So until that happens, uh, we have to keep on speaking until the laws that we put in place are make sense uh, to us uh, we still have work to do so i wake up every morning knowing yes we have beautiful laws around you know sexual and gender-based violence we have child protection laws we, you know we have the children's act we have many laws but my challenge has always been we never put our money where our laws are meaning we are not ensuring that yes we have laws and we look good we have good laws but we don't put budgetary allocation to these same laws that we are putting in place. So until you are safe in the workplace, uh, until when you get into a matatu, you are you as a woman feel safe, you know. Until you go to River Road and still feel safe, we are not safe yet. So that keeps on pushing me because we still have gaps. We still have, you know, things that we can do. And if I can vocalize that uh, to the ears that need to listen and need to do the work, I'll keep on doing it. Yeah. I mean, I really love that. I also um, listened to the Q&A session you had with um, the president. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people are waiting for the answers because you just shared the questions. Oh, sorry. I'll edit and, and share the answers. Yeah. He's waiting. Yeah. Um, and speaking of which, like, when you, when you talk about um, security mm. and um, us women not 
being safe. Mm. Right now, there's um, there's something I don't know what's going on, but there's a lot of insecurity yes. in the country. Yes. And like I'll tell you, even for me, walking in town right now, I I fear for my life. I have to, you know, um, keep watch of my belongings, mm-hmm. and also like on top of that, being a woman. Yes. Itself, so yeah. I feel like that's a very good cause to come, and I hope that we actually get sustainable solutions. Yes. I mean, we know we have the solutions. We just don't have the. I keep on saying the political will. Hence, I asked the president those two questions around sexual gender-based violence and around the two-third gender rule. Why? Because these are things that are already given to us by law. And so why aren't we actualizing them? And so I always tell men that it's easy for you to wake up and put on your jeans and go to town and never think about where will I walk in town. But for us women, we have to double think. Will I be in town? Which streets will I be in? What do I wear? All those things we have to think about it but men don't have to do that so the girl is more vulnerable and even during the covid uh, period we found a lot of numbers of girls getting pregnant but they were not just getting pregnant they were being violated because any child who is under 18 if they are pregnant they have been violated that's what the law says so who is making our children pregnant so there's so many things to do that you can't just sleep I mean, if, if God has given you the voice and given you the opportunity to be in certain spaces, you raise those issues so that our children, when they come, they'll find a better, safer Kenya to live in and to be proud of. Amazing. Yeah. Yes. To implement them. Just put our money there. We have money for MPs to go on trips. I think we can have money to resource our police. Our police. Now we have a, a forensic lab, which helps us. You know, which would eventually help us track if somebody violates somebody in Nairobi, goes to Mombasa. You know, we can track those kind of people. So that's a good step. You no, know, but we need to, you know, uh, do more. And of course, Vivo making sure that we look good when we are making all this noise. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. All right. Um. So your career has been very. It's, it's like I would want to learn about. So in terms of like your career trajectory. Yeah. Um. How has that impacted your life? Wow. Maybe I shared two. Is it two stories? When I was nine. Because that now when I look back, I see where my activism came from. Yeah. When I was nine, we were playing in this Nairobi. We were playing and then a little boy came. We were just girls. Threw a stone at one of us and she got hurt. And she also threw a stone at him and he got hurt. So he ran and went to the uncle and the uncle used to smoke bang. So we in our, our court playing, then we were like, oh, things have gone haywire. So we stand outside her gate. Now the uncle of this boy comes. And then he finds me outside and other kids. And I don't know why he chose me. But he just threw a serious flying kick (laughs) and hurt my eye. So one of my eyes have had surgery. And so I remember my mother taking me to the police station to report. Taking me to Nginyata National Hospital for the minor surgery that I had. I remember showing up at Makadara Law Courts. And uh, being, you know, that Vyoja Makamani scene you've seen, I have experienced it at nine. And so I was the lead witness of the state. And I remember, you know, sharing what has happened. This guy went in for for two years uh, for hurting me, yes. And then fast forward when I was in class six, I was a prefect. Then the headmistress passes by, I have not done written noise makers because we were discussing so i told her we are discussing there are no noise makers where it was january she told me to go out and walk on my knees up to her office so by the time i got home in the evening i was really bruised and so my mother asked me what happened and i said i fell she said oh so you only fell with your knees nowhere else what really happened so i told her the following day there was enough drama in my school my mother went to Jogo House Ministry of Education. The teacher was mo- the, the the headmistress was moved to a different um, different uh, school within a week, and those days that should, wasn't happening. But what am I saying? These stories told me that you have to stand up for your right, that somebody should not take it away from you, 
and also you need to speak up for others so my mother showed me it wasn't you don't it, it's not about you being an activist you don't have to be on the streets but wherever you are what can you do so i've learned from that young age to speak up when there's something wrong so when there's an injustice so my trajectory of being a journalist was to report injustices then moving on into the ngo world in the women's rights space to report on injustice and speak up to who I felt was more vulnerable. And of course, I only know how to be a woman. So I'll be able to know where the shoe hurts and so I can speak about it. Beautiful. Yeah, story. yeah. You speak about your mom a lot. Yes. And, um, in addition to that, also, you noticed that you've taken up a lot of leadership roles in your life. Yes. How would you say your mom has um, impacted the woman you are today? Wow, she's... Um, she taught to me about sex education i mean we we are constantly fighting in this country about sex education but i always believe that the parents should be the first people who are talking to their children about sex she was the first one to tell me about uh sex when i was 17 and then she was always a very prayerful woman but also standing up for her rights and so just seeing her example her resilience has helped me and I, I mean i tell people i'm the child of my mother there's a book i'm writing about my mother's daughter just putting on nuggets of the things that she taught me and now that i see life i can put those nuggets in different aspects of life and hopefully share with other people yeah well, yes sure get back <laughs> oh she was a firebrand herself <laughs> Yeah. Um, how do you create that life balance? Um, seeing that you're a very powerful career woman, you have two sons, so yes. a family woman, and I'm sure you also have life outside family and your career. Yeah. You have friends, you have family that is not within your family. Mm -hmm. So how do you find that life balance and you still have a time to have fun, travel? Oh. I tell women most important thing take care of yourself <laughs> because you it's 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 those statements that we say oh you can't give what you don't have it is very very true if you don't take care of yourself as a woman you will give 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 and you'll be depleted and once you're depleted there's nothing more to give so i give more to myself first and then the rest can follow because i am the most important person in my life and then come everybody else so if i don't take care of myself then uh, I will be expecting other people to do things and I, I have to show people how to love me so I have to take care of myself so how do I balance that I have make sure you have good quality help make sure you are able to organize yourself I mean you don't have to do it I don't have to cook ugali for people to know I can cook ugali I don't have to cook but if I know if I make sure that either there's a timetable or what ingredients are needed there, there like i know literally what my kids will eat today i mean it's just managing right now i should be a i'm a manager of my home i don't have to do things for me to be to be known that my hand is in there and so a lot of us women struggle to i want to be the best cook to be the best wife to be the best mother i want to be the best in the office and to be the best friend i want to be we struggle with that a lot yet some things we really don't have to be completely hands-on we once we create a system that works actually that's it create a system that works and follow it and make sure you are always giving back to yourself i take holidays without the family so that i can replenish because even the work that we do really takes a lot from you when you hear there's a child who's been violated in the morning you hear there's a child something has happened to a woman it takes emotionally it drains you and so once in a while i take i take off i don't even have to plan for it i just go away and i have this plan with my travel agent that i throw in money so that in case i need to recharge i quickly call wow. where can i go how much do i have and where can i go and she's like oh you can go here then i do and so that's what i do otherwise uh, this energy where will it come from <laughs> Yeah. Uh, by what you just said right now one you have to fill your cup first yes you can, so you have enough to yes give, give to others and then also leadership is about delegating yes you can't really execute all these mm -mm. things some you. balls will fall exactly mm. amazing and then like just you know having a travel agent like that's 
it's oh, important <laughs> yeah because can you imagine trying to go somewhere and you don't even know you don't have reviews yeah. and you just had and so at least the travel agent will check it out for you you save and you manage to go to places that uh, if you were to do it by yourself you might not go you might just go to naivasha or whatever else but this country is so huge there's so many things to see many places to go yes ladies i hope you got something out of that have a travel fund and get yourself a travel agent yes awesome. okay. so i want to move to like the very fun stuff mm -hmm. a very beautiful house in fact i wish we went there today <laughs> Well, uh, the kids are closing school and then we put up the Christmas tree. We have two Christmas trees. We have one in Nairobi, we have one in Shags. So we, when we go to Shags, we put up the other one. There's a Kamapera tree outside my house. So we make sure we have all the lights. <laughs> you yeah, so we put up and as for us, we are those, that family that stays Christmas until Feb, even March, wow. we'll have Christmas. I mean, we. We don't pull it down very fast. Yeah. yeah. So, so can you say you're really in that festive mood? Yeah, we like, I mean, the kids like that. And I like, for me, I grew up with my mother giving me memories of Christmas. Mm -hmm. And so whichever format it comes in, we just decorate the house, of course. And then we enjoy that part of decorating. We eat a lot. We <laughs> cook a lot. Uh, so cr Christmas for us is a vibe. It's we just I don't harass the kids on how much they're watching TV or not, so they all look forward to it. Yeah. I, I love that you mentioned um, how your mom um, yeah. brought that culture yeah. for Christmas. Yeah. Yes. So I want to take you down memory. Mm -hmm. What are the memories that you remember and that you loved as a kid during Christmas? Oh, there's like a place in town. There used to be some cookies, California cookies. Mm -hmm. I don't know how old you guys are who are watching but those california cookies i forgot in the street and over christmas my mom would go and order and assorted and they were made fresh and so we would have those we knew for a fact christmas and then mom used to do this thing that christmas nobody goes into her kitchen she does all the cooking and my mom would like stacky stacky chapati biscotti so she wants nataka chapati laini and she doesn't trust us even after she's taught us anyway so there was that moment where we go to church and we come back we don't even we don't even cook she's already she slept cooking then now we just eat and there's jokes and there's laughter i mean i enjoyed that going to church coming back for two days i'm picking yeah you're just eating leftover <laughs> Us. yeah so those were my memories and my mom was a very humorous woman so we at that point is when we all sit together and really really laugh a lot so during christmas i do miss her i miss her a lot because she was one of those people who made sure family came together and so now that she's gone sometimes just trying to pull people together is another a story altogether and i'm sure many people can identify uh but yes when the matriarch is gone it becomes such a big challenge but those are some of my memories uh when i was a child eating oh and then we had those dresses of zagorov are those ones and we all look alike <laughs> yeah so that's true beautiful yeah yes definitely uh we'll, i'll definitely take the boys to shag so they can feed the chickens take care of the dogs do many things and we we, we usually use christmas time to make sure that we did talks from gadgets yes so it's a it's our no gadget time and and going into the countryside is beautiful fresh air no hurry you can wake up at nine wake up at 10 you can eat one meal and it's a huge meal <laughs> the whole day and you're good exactly and also the kids get in touch and have help around in the in the in the home so i i look forward to that i think that's a very beautiful culture because um in the modern age this digital age right now you find that we are constantly trying we become consumers of content mm. so we are constantly on our phones either on facebook instagram youtube so there's even a joke I saw online where they were saying uh, human beings in 2050 will be... This is our look. Exactly. Yeah. This is our look. So that's a very interesting culture. Yeah. And definitely do that. Um, Hoping they don't forget. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Just make it a rule. 
No, you no you keep on teaching, but you know how kids yeah. are. Kwanza are preteens, man. I have a preteen there. And then you know, teens nowadays, like they do not know how to go out and play. Like their kind of entertainment is video games. Oh, I keep games. on chasing them yeah. from the house. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's a concern. So, at least in sharks, I, wish you I don't right. have to. <laughs> no, it's just, we, we just don't do gadgets. Yeah. Yes, there is a phone, but mm-hmm. beauty is we have so many trees around us. There is no it's network. So <laughs> So we don't have to go online. Right. Yeah. So fill in the blank. Hmm. Christmas isn't Christmas without. Chapo. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how do you have Christmas without Chapo? I know we are used to eating Chapo. Like we have Chapo, yes. But there's just something about Chapo and yeah. Christmas. Like it has to be there. Alright. Yeah. My next question is gonna be what's your favorite Christmas meal? Okay. For me mm-hmm. personally, every day from January first. Mm-hmm. To December 31st I am fine with ugali and managu mm-hmm. I am so fine with that wow. yeah so even on Christmas there has to be some ugali somewhere mm-hmm. and some managu somewhere you know ugali is very filling yes it's the kind of meal you have in the morning and you set for the whole bus all right yeah favorite Christmas song ah I don't say the first Noel silent night because then we I remember we used to stay up late so that Christmas comes when we are awake and so Silent Night is, is the one that I love. Beautiful. Yeah. Alright, so just parting shots, um, another interesting question would be what's your drink of choice? Coffee. Coffee. And my doctor said that I'm whispering because my doctor <laughs> said that it is. Mm-hmm. I have to have coffee yeah. in the morning. At least nowadays I just have it in the morning and otherwise when I'm at home it's like this working from home just made me take too much coffee. Yeah. Yes. Um, as a vivo woman for over ten years. Wow. What advice would you give a woman watching this today? That love you, love yourself, do what makes you happy. Uh, make sure that uh, you live for a purpose find what your purpose is what is that thing that you do even if you do for free without being paid you are still energized in the morning to wake up and do it what is that thing because in the end of it all after this journey of life you want to you want your life to have meant something what what impact did i leave my children my community my society what did i do to make a difference it doesn't have to be a big thing like i said wherever you are you can be vocal and if there's a problem somewhere you can and you have the ability to do something do it so that your life means something we are not on this planet for ourselves we are here to impact the lives of others yeah beautifully put thank you so much for thank visiting you. us thank you thank next you. time you guys visit right actually we are going to have a face two of this if you loved this interview, please put a thumbs up. And if you want us to get all the way to Kitengela to meet Florence Machio, please come. Please let us know <laughs> in the comment section below. Thank you so much, Florence. You are a ball of Thank energy. you. Thank you for having me. And your confidence is out of this world. And I hope a lot of other women are able to, you know, be inspired by the kind of woman in the works that you've done. Maybe you can also tell us the books you've written so that we can... We can buy them and read them. All right. So the books I've written are actually for policy. So they're not like in the bookshop available for, 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 for reading. But I'll invite every woman to read a book called Difficult Woman. Difficult Woman by Helen Myers. And this book, the people who change the world are difficult. The people who are complacent will never change the world. So Difficult Woman shows you a history of women around the world who have made a difference, who helped us get to a place where we can vote, who allowed us to actually, who fought the fight so that we can go to university. Do you know that women were were never allowed to go to university? And also sometimes they would go to university, you finish and you're never given your degree because you are a woman? Well, so there are women who went ahead and did something. So read that one and be a difficult woman where you are. Amazing. Yes. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Thank you. <laughs>